quick uh, verse to you, and we will uh, dismiss after that. Acts 14, we want to read from the New Living Translation. For all of those who are visiting with us, we praise God for you being here. We hope and pray you'll come back uh, when we can, uh, uh, not only this week, but next week as we are continually to have church service. But even when we uh, go back into the auditorium, we would love for you to come be with us. Acts chapter 14, verses 19 and 20. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over to Jesus Christ. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered together, he got up, listen to this church, and he went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. They beat him in the same city that he went back to to give them Jesus Christ. Let me give it to you one more time. In verse number 19, they beat him and left him for dead. But in verse number 20, he went back into the same city that they had just tried to kill him to try to give him Jesus. I know you might be far away from somebody, and as we are following the CDC codes for the city of Dallas, amen, code compliance, we thank God we're following the code, amen, and we, are, we want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I only got one shot. And that neighbor's boring. Try your other neighbor in the car and say, neighbor, old neighbor. We only have one shot. Father God, please bless us and keep us as we study your word. Help us, guide us, and watch over us. Help us to be better and do better. In your son's name we do pray. Pray. And all who believe said amen. There was a prophetic rapper by the name of Eminem who sung a song, and the core of the song said, Look. If you have one shot, one opportunity to seize everything and even, even one moment, would you capture it or would you let it slip away? He was talking about one opportunity he had to become a failure or to become a success in a rap competition that he had on the south side of Detroit. He was scared before the competition. He was sitting there uh, fearful that he would not be able to win the award, but he said to lose is to not try. To be a failure is to not make an attempt. And let me tell you something, every shot that you are unwilling to take, you've already missed that sometimes we as people who have been kissed by the sun, we lose because we have a mechanism stuck in our brain that failure is winning. Do you not know that you and I have a molecular makeup, makeup in our brain that is inclined to help you fail than to succeed? Let me give you an example. Have you ever started losing weight and somebody asks you, are you sick? And you know you've been trying to diet and lose weight and you start eating just to see if you can gain weight again. We got a mechanism that de derives us to fail instead of win. And let me say to our college graduates and our high school graduates, you have won, but you haven't finished winning. Keep pushing, keep letting God use you, and guess what? To really win is to go to be with God forevermore. Look, look at the text. In Acts chapter 14, Paul had just been beaten by some people in Lystra and Derby. In chapter 14, they took him out of the city, dropped him off, and left him for dead. The Bible says the next day he got up, went back in the city, 
And when he went back in the city, he went back to the same people who had beat him the day before. Catch this. One of the most interesting things of the text actually happens in Acts chapter 16. Because in Acts chapter 16, we find out that there's a young man who lives in Lystra and Derby by the name of Timothy. When he goes back to the city, he didn't just go back because he was a winner. He went back because somebody was watching him. The reason that we believe that Timothy came to Jesus was because he watched Paul be beaten but he knew that Paul took that one moment to change somebody else's life. Let me give you something. Know that somebody somewhere is watching you. All right. Boy, it's hard to preach without amen. Some, amen. Somebody back here say amen when you can. That somebody is watching you. Now, you can watch them and make them go down, or they can watch you and make you go up. Somebody at your job is watching you. Somebody at your business is watching you. Somebody in your neighborhood is watching you. Somebody in your house is watching you. And because of what you decide to do for God or to take the opportunity to do good, guess what? They, it might change their life because they can see what you do more than hear what you say. And here, here is Paul, and the reason we have Timothy is because I believe Timothy saw Paul be beaten in Lystra and Derby, but he saw Paul get back up and go back in the city. Let me give you number two. Everybody gets knocked down. Lord, let, me, let me give it to you again. Actually, your best learn lessons are learned when you're willing to get back up from what took you out. Preach, Doc. I'm doing it, but nobody want to have our door church. That some of your best lessons, my best lessons, was when life knocked me down and out. But I had to find the strength through God to get back on my knees and then get back on my legs and stand up and lift my head up. Sometimes your best gift is to get out of bed and let the sun kiss you on the cheek. But some of us use our Derby Lystra day to stay down because you want to have an excuse to be a failure. I know your daddy wasn't there, but now won't you be a good daddy to your children? I know your mother wasn't there, but won't you change the paradigm and be a great mother to the next generation? It only takes one generation to change the world, but if you choose to be a victim more than a victor, you will stay on the outside of Derby and Lystra instead of getting up to get somebody else up. And guess what? When you lay down, your children become lay down addicts. You won't get up. They laid you off on Friday. Get up on Monday. Cry, cry all weekend. But get up on Monday and say, I'm going to get up and find me another job. Don't let your last failure be your last lay down. And what I love about the Apostle Paul, he kept getting knocked down. He kept getting left for dead. He even tells us, I was beaten four times. I was left for dead. I was shipwrecked. But God kept getting me up every day. Because somebody's watching you. Somebody knows everybody gets knocked down. But actually, your living legacy is not wrapped up in you. It's how you leave those who are watching you. All right, all right. The reason we have most of the pastoral epistles is because he was writing to Timothy to go set every church and Titus every church in order. Paul knew he was going to die. So what he did was he deposited life into somebody else. Y'all remember, y'all remember in Acts, or y'all remember, not in Acts, y'all remember in the movie Black Panther, the last three months I've been watching every black movie I can find. Okay. Uh, and y'all remember in Black Panther, uh, a, a silhouette of his dad came back to him, the king, and he, his dad said, he said, I can't be what you were as a king. And uh, his daddy said, if I didn't prepare you to live without me, I have failed you as a father. All right. 
All right, here it is. Stop making people dependent on you and not making them dependent on God. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. All right, y'all going to get mad at me. Y'all going to get mad at me, but since y'all don't want to have church, stop making your children everlasting dependent. Y'all don't want to. Some of this is our fault. Is this my working? Some of this is our problem. You can't go and get a job in a, in a sleepwear. Uh, okay, y'all, uh, let, me, let me talk to somebody else that don't want to. Uh, you, you, you can't go apply for a job and still got your uh, hand net on. Uh, y'all, y'all, somebody's watching. You got to act like even though you need to look like us better than where you are. Sometimes God wants to use you, but the reason he can't use you because you've let them use you. Sometimes I recognize that my living legacy is not for me to be great, but for me to deposit into these kids and other generations to come that they can be greater, they can be better. Even though you can't march sometimes, you ought to pray for those who are marching. You Sometimes you can't be downtown every week. You ought to say, hey, I take a stand with you because you're taking a stand for a better place. I heard a, I heard a story Friday in a meeting I was in, and I already told him I was going to steal it, but this, this man told the story about him wanting to beat his grandmother in Monopoly. Have y'all ever played Monopoly? Uh, when, when you play Monopoly, the whole job of Monopoly is to acquire stuff. That You want to acquire houses, you want to acquire land, and, and you want to acquire different things. And, and he said he finally had enough strength to beat his grandmother in Monopoly. She had won for years, and he went out and learned how to play so he could beat his grandmother. But he said the first time he beat her, he was so deflated because after he beat her and if the game was over, they had to put the whole game back in the box. He wanted it to stay like that. But he said at the end of every game, the game has to go back in the box. Don't miss your point. That at the end of each one of our lives, only thing you and I gonna have is to go back in the box. But the box is not what holds you. I can live past the box if I'm right with the Lord and if I left a legacy for somebody else. Life is bigger than your box. Life is bigger than your money. Life is bigger than your car. Life is bigger than your honey. Life ought to have an impact to make somebody better. And that's what Paul did. That's what Paul did. Paul left those in charge who he had touched by the loving of Jesus Christ. Each one of us need to consider having a stronger walk with Jesus Christ. Leave an impact. Leave, leave a motivation. Let, let, your, uh, let your world know that somebody's watching me and somebody's listening to me. Somebody is uh, looking up to you. And you can be pushing them down or you can be putting them up by the way you and I live our lives. Somebody needs to come to Jesus right now. Somebody needs to give their life over to Jesus Christ right now for the pardoning of their sins. You still need Jesus, and if you ever needed the Lord before, you so do need him now. Let me give that to you again. With a crazy president, with a crazy governor, y'all ain't gonna have church. When they'll, when they'll come and check to see how many people we got parking in the parking lot but won't go downtown to check, there's a crazy world going on. But let me tell you something. Don't celebrate you, celebrate the Lord, because we serve a mighty good Savior.